Well, good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Pastor, What Did You Mean? With Pastor Andrew Wild. Good to see you. Thanks for that chance to be here. Yeah, you know, and this is a little bit of a, a change. It's good for me to be back because last week uh, you sat here and we're uh, having a conversation with Pastor Beatty. And so thank you for that. And have, that was a great conversation. And before we get into the Gospel of John, um, I did have, I was listening. Okay, okay. I know many of you were watching the interview with, with uh, Andrew and David on uh, the Gospel of Luke. And mm -hmm. you asked Pastor Beatty uh, the question, what is your favorite gospel? I think you used the word, and of course there's a you know, favorite, mm -hmm. does it resonate with you, or where have you found most of your time? And uh, at the time, Pastor Beatty said, uh, David said, um, well, really, whichever one I'm in. And uh, That's right. I thought, I don't know if you thought this, but for as, as, as much as David seems to encourage the reading of the Gospel of mm -hmm. John, particularly for those that don't know mm -hmm. Christ, those that are curious, that's his go-to, right? Would you agree? I mean, that's, the, uh, yes. We've heard it more than once. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I, I don't know. It seems like he does have a favorite. And so what I did is I went back over the last 500 sermons. Wow. How, so, how, any idea how many years that is? That's, 500 uh, sermons. November. I guess I could do 52 <laughs> sermons a, a year. Yeah, and some special so. services and also okay. uh, it was November of 2010. Wow. I went back through all those sermons. Oh, almost, almost a decade there. Almost a decade. And one of the things I found was that um, we have preached, and mostly Pastor David, but uh, everyone else, yeah. we've preached 158 sermons out of the Gospels. Wow. 158 out of the 500 Almost Gospels. Almost a third of, the, of our sermons have been on the Gospels. And um, you know what? He was right. Surprise. Matthew, 55 sermons. Okay. A full year, basically, in Matthew. Uh, John, 49 sermons. I remember, like, we did a sermon series on John, maybe like 2011, maybe. We so did. Sermon, a lot of sermon on the Mount was, you know, with Matthew yeah. later and, uh -huh. and, and then Mark. Luke, 41 sermons. Okay. And then uh, poor, poor Mark. Uh, you know, that's it. I resonate with Mark. Uh, 13 sermons, so we're, we're going to have to play some catch-up. <laughs> we're going to have to have a conversation with him. <laughs> but uh, one of the reasons I brought this up about the gospel is one, uh, well, certainly, if we're going to preach Christ crucified, crucified, that's a good place to start. Yeah. And um, and we're in the gospels right now. In fact, we're wrapping up mm -hmm. the gospels um, according yeah. to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so we get to your sermon yesterday mm -hmm. out of the gospel according to John, and I'm reminded of that old uh, Sesame Street. Uh, little episode, you know, the little uh, segment they always had. One of these things is not like uh, the other. Yeah, okay, okay. And, um, and so, you know, for three weeks we've talked about the synoptics, the synoptics, synoptics, mm -hmm. and now we have John. How, what do you tell people? What, do you, what does it mean that John is not like the other three Gospels, and how do you explain That's a great that? question. Okay. So, so all of the Gospels give us a portrait of Jesus. Right. Uh, the reason we come up with the word synoptic, it, it's, it's from a Greek word that right. means, you, you probably know this uh, from, from your Greek studies. Well, if I remember, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but the, the Greek word essentially means together sight. And, and so it's this idea of, 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 of seeing along the same lines. Right. And so Matthew, Mark, similar. and Luke, they have similar accounts, right. similar words, similar order. But you don't see that with John. Right. Uh, John kind of has a little bit of a different style. Yeah. Okay. Mark kind of gets right into the action. Right. Uh, Matthew and Luke, it's a, you know, there's a genealogy there. Right, right. John, in the beginning, was the Word. He takes us all the way back to the very mm. beginning. It, it, and he has, not, not that he's making things up for Jesus, but just the way that he has it structured. There's some things that are unique to John. So, so okay. whether it's verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, this way of Jesus reinforcing things that are really important. Uh, John has, he's the only one that gives us the upper room discourse. Hmm. So, so the latter half of the book there, um, okay. he washes okay. the disciples' feet. And then there's this extended teaching in chapter 14, 15, and 16. And then we get the great high priestly prayer hmm. in John 17. So just the, the portrait, the picture he's giving us of Jesus is a little bit different from the ones that the other three yeah. had. And, and, and Church history has it that the other three were definitely written first. Right, right. And that, and that John's came later. And I want to say it was uh, Alexandria of Clement. Okay. And apparently what he says is, knowing that all the other ones were there, that John came along later. You know, he's the apostle that supposedly lived the longest. Right. I mean, some would even say this was written as late as like 90 A.D. I've, I mean, I've seen that, right. Um, 
So which means he enjoyed a long life. Right. Um, apparently, you know, um, perhaps even on the island of Patmos, but maybe this was composed in Ephesus. Certainly Revelation mm -hmm. was on the island mm -hmm. of Patmos. Yeah. Um, he, he, um, but, but Alexander of Clement says that this is the spiritual gospel. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to look at it. It's, well, and as you're describing this, is it fair to say that um, we look at the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, mm -hmm. and what we're seeing is Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah, mm -hmm. Jesus is the Messiah, and we get to John, and John's really saying, yes, because Jesus is God. Yes. Is that a fair way of looking at yes. it, too? Yes. I mean, in the beginning, Creator, He is, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all the way through. And, and not only Jesus is God, but the key words, particularly in your sermon yesterday, you, you must have used them a dozen times. Um, the word believe. Yeah. Believe He is God. Yeah. So, uh, the beautiful thing about John, I mean, it, like in terms of literary work, yeah. uh, foreshadowing, irony, but he'll, he'll, he'll do this thing with contrast, like light and darkness, yeah, 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 yeah. love and hate, yeah. and then he's got belief versus rejection. Okay. And then he'll use a lot of physical objects to convey spiritual truths. So he'll talk about a vine. Okay, right. Or he'll right. talk about, you're, I, you're talking about believing, yeah. so John 3.16, the most famous of all. Um, yeah. But even in there, he uses physical birth with his conversation with Nicodemus to That's kind right. of convey this idea of being born again. That's right. He uses um, like a cup. Um, he uses bread. Uh, That's right. Water. water. So all these, these yeah, physical things yeah, to convey yeah. these great spiritual truths. It's oh, just unique good. to his style. That's good. And we're, well, and we're going to get back to believe because I okay. do have a what, what did you mean uh, all right. that maybe some of us were scratching our heads saying, what did you mean uh, about the word belief? But we'll get right. to that here in a moment. Okay. Um, but life is the other. Uh, he uses the death yes. and life uh, all the mm -hmm. time. Um, and I, you know, one of my favorite um, scriptures really, and, and it's even partial, is, is just the, you know, uh, he came that we may have life and we have life to the, the fullest. fullest. Um, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. not just eternally. That's right. Which is truly part of what he's looking mm -hmm. at, but um, that our eternity starts the moment we mm -hmm. receive him and believe him. Yes. And uh, man, that's great. And, and then the final sort of, before we... Can I say something yeah, about please. that life? Yeah, please. So some people, you know, it's eternal life or everlasting life. They think of it just maybe in terms of a life that goes on forever. Okay. But, but Jesus isn't saying just it's not about the duration of the life, it's about the quality yeah. of that life. And I think it, it's both when we think about everlasting or eternal life. Delicious. Not just infinity, life just yeah. keep going ad nauseum, but the quality of that life. Mm. Sorry ahead. to interrupt. That's but, yeah. a good word. No, that's a good word. And, and I was just going to say the last sort of... Um, you know, Gospel of John comment here, if we're looking at the, 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 the book itself, you said something really interesting too, I thought was, was a great way to look at it, is you can break it in two halves. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gospel according to John, the first half, you talked about the signs. Book of signs. Book of signs. And the second half, am I, what I heard was the sort of book of Passover week or the book they of final week. They the book week of or, passion or the book, book of glory. Of passion week, okay. Book of passion. But book of signs, Mm -hmm. uh, some will say seven, some eight or six. Or, yeah. Wh why isn't it the book of miracles? Aren't, isn't, uh, what, isn't that what the signs great, are? Great question. The signs are miracles. Right? Okay. I mean, so, so it's more than a miracle. Okay. Because more than a miracle. It's, it, it's true okay. to say these things are miracles because okay. the only person that could have done it is God. I mean, it, it defies okay. the right. nature. But they're more than mere displays of power. Okay. Because they're symbol-laden events that are just, they're, they're so rich in meaning for the person who has eyes to see because of the way that they're okay. revealing. It allows for this self-disclosure of God. And so, yeah, he's, Jesus could have done lots of incredible things. Yeah. But, but remember, he, he's just, he's not interested in attracting a crowd. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. He's, and, and, and their signs also perhaps because they're, they're actually pointing to something else. Mm-hmm. You can read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We see, I think, the word miracle more often. Yes, that's the that's yes. the miracle. That's because we want to see him as a healer. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see him as a physician, the great physician. Yeah. And John's saying, well, no, he's he does all those yeah. things. Yes, but look what they're pointing to. Yes, that's why they're signs. Um, sometimes they're also called works. You know, okay, works of Jesus. But, the works of Jesus. But signs is, okay. is one he used more often. And of these seven that most will look at in this first half of the book. You led us through the f really the final. Some will say the yeah. climactic sign. Yes. Um, I think you and I both said that. Well, there's probably that whole sign of of uh, 
his, his resurrection. That's right. <laughs> that the was, empty tomb on the third day. That's but, pretty powerful that's, apologetic. That's a good one. Uh, but uh, as far as his, in his earthly ministry, this is sort of the, the one that comes to the, the, the head. This, is, this mm-hmm. is the most pivotal. Um, and it was the sign of? Lazarus. Lazarus. Four days in the tomb. And, right. and I, I didn't right. mention this, but yeah. why, why four days? You know, why not? Why not two? Yeah. Um, so I, I, what I understand, and th- okay. this is from from literature that is actually dated, you know, probably second century, third century. So it's not first century, but so we don't know if this was the belief that the Jewish people had at that time. But okay. some suspect that it was. Right. Okay. Was the, you know, like the soul or the spirit might just kind of hover above the body for three days, just just to kind of wait and see, and then it would depart on that third day. So some are saying it's just like there's absolutely no question. Make sure. Princess Bride deal. Ah, he's mostly dead. You know, the, yeah, you know no, yeah. <laughs> he is completely dead. Yeah. Okay. And 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 we're told um, that one of the reasons the four days and then the sign itself mm-hmm. was so that they may believe. That's right. right. There's that word again. They may believe. And in fact, this is what I wanted to ask you too about this was. Um, not only did those that saw believe, I mean, how could you not, right? You would think. Mm. But we're also told that the high priest saw and knew and heard of and, and, and testified to it. Yeah. And they had two options. They also could have believed. You would think they would have. Mm-hmm. Or what they said was, we have to stop him because as he keeps doing these things, more will believe. Yeah. Why do you think they, they didn't believe? <laughs> this is a great. It, it's a this is a, it's a great, right. great question. Um, it reminds me too of like if we keep reading in John. Okay. Um, we we get to John twelve, and he it, it lets us know that this just wasn't the Lazarus. I mean, this okay. this was everything. Okay. Um, when Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him. And so, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Oh, wow. Um, uh, but it makes me think, too, of um, Jesus tells this parable in Luke, uh, an interaction between Lazarus and a rich man. Yeah, okay. So um, Lazarus dies. He, he goes to Abraham's bosom, mm-hmm. the rich man. He, go, he goes to mm. a different place, the place of torment. And... Um, he has this interaction through the gulf with Abraham, and he says, hey, you know, please, I've got five brothers. Yeah. Send someone back to them. And Abraham says, and this is through the words of Jesus, mm-hmm. he says that they've got Moses and the prophets. And the rich man objects. He says, no, 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 no. He says, um, if, yeah. if, someone, if someone were to go back from the dead and tell them, then they would believe. And Jesus, through, you know, says yeah. this through Abraham. He says, no. Yeah. He says, you know, if they're not going to believe Moses and the prophets, then, then, then even if someone were to come back from the dead, they're not going to believe. And so, I, you know, I, I don't know what we do with that, but I, just, I think of the person who says, well, you know, God just hasn't given me enough proof. And if he, mm-hmm. if he, were, to, you know, if he were to do something definitive like yeah. this, it's like, well, no, what, it, what it, Jesus seems to be saying is like, this is a hard issue. Yeah. Like the evidence is there. Yeah. And the, and the question is is your heart going to be soft? Is it going to be mm-hmm. receptive to it? Because yeah. it doesn't matter how spectacular it is. If your heart isn't there, yeah. you're going to figure out a way to rationalize it and, and and do something different with it. Well, and I think I think the other thing for us to do with is we are to be missional, right? We're to share yeah. share share um you know um Again, I always go like Spurgeon says, right? If if God had <laughs> we got to quote Spurgeon. If, if God had painted a yellow stripe on the bellies of those He had called, then I'd go around picking up shirt tails, and and I would know for sure. But since He didn't, I'm going to preach it to everybody. Yep. But even though I preach it to everybody, it's not me softening hearts. It's me planting mm-hmm. seeds. Perhaps mm-hmm. God using me. But if Lazarus couldn't change minds, if if Moses and the prophets. If um, you know, John Calvin says, I look out here and preach, and some hearts are stirred to transformation, yeah. and some um, aren't even moved. It's, it, it's not the messenger's words. It's God's working in them. Mm-hmm. And so um, we, we are saddened by that, but yet um, we also should be encouraged that we, we, and humbled. That's right. That we can't 
uh, we can't move and we can't take the responsibility even though we're, we're missional in aspect. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's what's happened with the high priest. Regardless who, who came before them or what they saw, um, they, just, they just couldn't believe. Yeah. Uh, God had not drawn them nearer to them and they had not opened up to receive mm -hmm. that. Man, uh, Nicodemus, um, you know, yeah. was part of that same council. You know, he's part of that that's same right. group. Yeah, yeah. And he and he gets to a place of belief with uh, Joseph of Arimathea, and yeah. and yet Caiaphas and, doesn't. Oh, and what a wonderful! Uh, this is a little bit of a plug, but as we start to close this down here, uh, right. I wanted to ask you one more thing. But this scene of Nicodemus and this whole idea of, of believing. Um, if you haven't seen that first season of The Chosen, <laughs> I'd encourage you to see it. We've, we've actually got the first season in our library for anybody who'd like to check it out and, and not uh, have to do the downloads or anything online. But uh, Nicodemus is central to that first season. And it's all about the tension of, of his heart almost, but just not quite. Mm. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, final, final, okay. final. What did you mean, uh, Pastor Wild? Uh, the puzzling one, in le uh, chapter 11, 25, and 26. All right. Uh, it sounded like you said, those who believe in Jesus will die. Those who believe in Jesus will never die. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Look, we, we better get Jesus what words is, exactly not right. Let's not. Yeah, yeah, let's let's not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm um, not writing. But no, that's that's two. that's uh, that's that's essentially what it is. Yeah. But uh, here, here we go. We're John 11, like you said, uh, 25 to 26. Okay. Jesus said to her, "I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live." So he's he's conceding that even even if you believe in him, you're going to mm -hmm. die. You're going to die. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's, well, that well which, which one is it here, Jesus? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and what I think he's saying here is, I, you know, this isn't just, it's something to ruminate on, you know? Mm. It's something to go back and contemplate. Yeah. He, he's, he's dropping a paradox on them that really does reveal a, a great truth. When he says uh, at the very beginning there, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, uh, Jesus is, I think, acknowledging the fact that, that believers those of us that are in yeah. Christ, we're still going to experience physical death. Yeah. But that death is not the end. It's not game no. over. It's not unplug, you know, power down. That's right. It, it is a gateway into the life to come. Mm -hmm. And then when he says, everyone who lives and believes in me, when he's saying living, he's just not talking about everybody who has a pulse. He's talking about everyone who lives, who has the life that, that, that he so offers. The fullest, the rich. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone who has this life and believes in him shall never die. And that's because we said, like, to the essence of eternal life is to have the very life of Christ mm -hmm. in us. It's to have that fellowship. And that there, there's no yeah. stopping that. Once you've received, the, the life of Christ is ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. And well, and it, it so happens to align here, not in all of the yeah. seven I ams mm -hmm. that, that Jesus pronounces in John's gospel, but... Um, here I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the resurrection, so even in your death, I, I, I sort of bring back that, yeah. that new life for you. Mm -hmm. I give you a new life. Yeah, not just I can revive people, but this, this, is, in, this is embodied in me, resurrection yeah. and life. Yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Great. Yeah, I, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, the Andrew. conversation. Yeah, and, uh, and for those who were watching the sermon yesterday, yeah. you can appreciate that... Um, you know, faster than a speeding train and able to leap <laughs> tall buildings in a single bound. It's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's Pastor Wild here on the... <laughs> Pastor, what did you mean? So uh, um, thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week as we move to the Acts of the Apostles, Luke Part 2. Have a great week. God bless.